Hi there. David Nibben was one of my favourite actors. I, I enjoyed his movies a lot. And I can still remember when I heard about his death. It was announced on the TV. And I, re I really felt sad, uh, felt a sense of loss. And he had written his autobiography, The Moon's a Balloon, which I read when it was first published. But I reread it recently um, and I found it absolutely delightful again. So I wanted to kind of talk about it with you. Um, David's father, who he was very fond of, uh, it was killed when David was a very young boy. Um, this was during the First World War. His father was serving in, in the army and um, <clears throat> his mother remarried and he was sent to boarding school. He had the usual boarding school kind of experiences um, and then went to Sandhurst where he um, really majored in uh, partying. He uh, had a car and he would... Um, fill it up with um, some fellow cadets and they'd go off for a raucous night in London and um, it did set back his career a little bit but um, he he managed to um, be uh, commissioned and he had to put down his choice of regiment and he put his he had to he had a choice of three and he put his first two choices down his third choice was anything but the Highland Light Infantry so guess what? He gets sent to the Highland Light Infantry and they are also told that this is what he said. And they were um, in Malta. So this was uh, peacetime, garrison duties in Malta, um, no chance of promotion, um, very much uh, based around military sporting activities. Uh, he was encouraged to play polo even though he couldn't afford the ponies. There were a number of ponies belonging to Royal Navy officers that uh, were kept there while the uh, owners were at sea and so as to exercise them, then the uh, more impecunious officers could um, borrow them. Um, when he arrived at the Highland Light Infantry, he um, was warned by the adjutant about a character called Trubshaw. So this was obviously a magnet to him and he um, became friends with Trubshaw who is a terrific character, a real English character and um, he kind of lights up the book really. Um, anyway, there was, um, there was some good sides to uh, <coughs> service there. He, um, he, he really got on with the... Um, the men, the jocks, um, uh, found them very professional, but um, he he went on leave and, and then he decided that really um, it wasn't for him and he resigned his commission and he ended up in New York and then went across country to LA uh, and uh, he'd done a little bit of acting and he became an extra and then through some contacts he got some parts and he was given a contract with MGM, Metro Golden Mayor. And um, he made some, some um, um, quite well-known movies at the time. And uh, his girlfriend for a, a period of time was Mel Oberon, who, who was a big star. Uh, he palled up with um, Errol Flynn. Now... Errol Flynn um, was an Australian and he had um, become a star with Captain Blood and uh, him and David Niven were in the charge of the Light Brigade which for Hollywood reasons, uh, Hollywood's version of history was taking place in the northwest frontier of India and um, <clears throat> obviously it's a cavalry movie and Errol Flynn's on his horse and um, one of the, the there was a whole army of stunt riders, uh, real tough guys. One of them, as a joke, they had these rubber-tipped lancers. He 
plunged the lance into the backside of Elephant's horse, it reared up and uh, he cartwheeled to the ground. And he, he gets up and he goes, who did that? And this big, tough, broken nosed character says, I did, what do you want to make of it, son? So he said, get off your horse. And um, Edelfin batted him. Uh, he, he was taken to the hospital within minutes because he, he was a, a real tough guy. Apparently he was a superb athlete in many sports. He boxed regularly with um, uh, professional boxers. And um, to put it mildly, he liked the ladies. And he and David Niven got on quite well. Anyway, um, World War Two happens and uh, David Niven, uh, patriotically, uh, returns to England <clears throat> to uh, do his bit. And the MGM publicity machine uh, sends out press releases that he's basically going to join the RAF and save Britain. And this doesn't go down very well with the RAF. And, um, uh, they uh, don't really want to know about him and he's having a hard time finding somebody to um, take him on beca because of this publicity and um, he, he meets a guy at a party who says well why not join the rifles uh, and he said well I, I don't think they'd have, to, have me he said well I, I'm, I, I'm the commanding officer of one of the battalions um, you're on so he joined the rifles and um, they they had a visit from Winston Churchill. He was introduced to Churchill, who says to him that um, he he did a, a a very noble thing coming back to fight, and then follows up with, "But had you not, that would have been um, the action of a scoundrel." And he actually got to know Winston Churchill quite well, and used to have walks around the garden with him. Um, the great man would talk about um, ongoing uh, war problems. Um, he, he he had a great many friends. Um, Brian Franks was a schoolmate of his, who who later commanded the SAS, and um, he pops up in the book now and again. Um, a, another uh, person he met was Guy Gibson, um, of Dumbleston fame, and um, he, he knew him quite well um, and also he's very proud of the fact that uh, he introduced Robert Laycock to the commandos and he became um, um, quite a force to um, to reckon with anyway there was a new unit being formed uh, called Phantom and um, David Niven uh, volunteered for it and he went up to Arasag and went through the training uh, including training with Fairben and Sykes um, and he, he, he's always rather offhand about stuff but I mean he, he, he must have been pretty professional to be able to do that and he ended up commanding one of the squadrons of Phantom which was um, really a, a long range signal squadron um, providing communications uh, uh, from a, uh, an advanced position took part in Normandy and um, really um, did did very well um, while he was uh, still in the military he, he made a, or he had parts in a couple of movies uh, on his time off but he, he starred in a, a movie called The Way Ahead which he played a young officer and it was um, later used as a training film uh, at Sandhurst and other places because it's so well summed up uh, leadership and um, how a young officer should lead lead his men and um, it's, it's a good film anyway he returned to Hollywood um, and uh, made more movies including um, separate tables for which he won the Oscar uh, Guns and Our Own of course he was famous for that many many other films uh, the book, at, at first glance, you'd, you'd say it's it's um, full of name dropping, um, but you don't really consider it name dropping because he is um, the type of person that other people would drop his name. He 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 was up there, 
and he, he knew these people very well and um, it wasn't somebody you, you just met who says hello and then and you go around telling everybody you've met somebody he knew you knew these people he went on on their yachts and he went to dinner parties and, and he had affairs and um, so he, he was right in at, at, at the level the anecdotes in the book are really really funny he's a really good writer um, I, I'm not going to repeat his anecdotes because you know it, it, they're his um, and um, you know read the book because it, it's full from start to finish with funny things that happened and um, it's sad that he died um, many years ago now but his movies live on and the book also is a good uh, lasting memorial to him.